Welcome back, everybody, to our finale in the DC graveyard. Oh boy. Is it good to finally put this to rest, as it were, Mason? This Have you left a like, though? I mean, I could. As everyone else? Oh, good question, because we won't start until everybody gives us a like. That's right. We can't possibly know that. No, we don't know. Anyways, this one's unique, though, from the other four that we've uh, we've looked at, because this one isn't so much about a person being dead, either metaphorically or literally, and then mm. coming back to life, unless you count somebody killing their fear oh, to overcome, etc., and so forth. But that's not an expression. No, so I guess it's probably not. probably not, no. No, bury, hit your fear with a shovel and bury it. Did hit, your dad not say your, that to you? Hit your fear in a car park with a big green fist and then they go flying through a half-built brick wall. He killed those men. He killed three men. <laughs> this movie is fascinating because it feels to me, and again, I'd not seen this. I, I, really? I don't think so. I've seen snippets of it. I must have, but I don't think I'd seen it all the way through. Mm. Or, But this was just DC going, we need an Iron Man. We need a lovable. Oh, yeah. We need a lovable rogue mm. who's kind of uh, bit of a bad boy. Bit of a bad boy, and he's you know he can fly about and do quips and yep, and yep. shoot lasers and what have you. And people didn't like it. No, and, and there's a lot of reasons. Like I, I know that I, I skimmed some reviews and was like, okay, well you know it is too quippy and the the plot is bad and the CGI is pretty bad and etc. But it's just occurred to me coming in here. Is it partly because? Ultimately, this is kind of like a jocks versus nerds movie. <laughs> okay. And, and we're supposed to be rooting for the jock right, in this right, instance. Because okay, it's, yeah. it's the beautiful, you know, ripped uh, Hal Jordan versus that little nerdy mulleted Hector Hammond, you know? That might be it. I don't know. Look, I like Ryan Reynolds. I don't think he's wrong for Hal Jordan, but whatever they're doing here is not working. Mm. You know, I, I feel like a version of him that we saw recently in like the Adam Project would have been a better version of Hal Jordan. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or maybe it's a movie where, like, I imagine a lot of times, you know, the first five minutes of a movie sort of, you know, makes you decide whether you, you love it or hate it or have you. And this is a movie, it's a, allegedly about a man who has no fear. Yeah. But, but right at the start of the movie, he's afraid of running late. <laughs> I wouldn't be. <laughs> no. If I were that guy, I'd be like, whatever, I don't... You'd be a daylight. Yeah, I'll be a daylight. <laughs> oh, I missed, the, I missed the fighter jet test, did I? Yeah. I don't even care. <laughs> I was too busy sleeping with this woman who looked looks a little bit like Blake Lively. And I'm like, is that Blake Lively at the start? But it's different. It's a different woman to Blake Lively. That's right. But... Is this how, where they met? That's how they met. Oh, exactly, nice. yeah. Anyways, what kind of threw me off and always struck me as odd at the start of a movie, and it's generally never a good sign. There's probably okay, a few I'm, examples where it is. Where it's a narrator going... Millions of years ago, something in the blah blah quadrant, and every, everybody, mm. there's an intergalactic, and the boogly boo escaped, and he went after the blibbity blab. There's wow. a Michael Cusack video he did, Smiling Friends recently, that, oh, yes. that did like this exact thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Where it's just yeah. like, this is too vague and too much. Mm. And you've clearly put it in post because you don't think people are going to understand this movie, but also the movie explains all of this within the movie. It's not complicated. I always wonder about these mm. opening crawls to movies. Just say they're cops. Just be like, there's a bunch of space fucking cops, cops are in <laughs> space. There's bloody... But it feels to me like, are these for people who are planning on... They're just on the cusp of leaving the theatre at all times? Yeah, maybe. You're like, I've got to... Got to reassure these people that this is, isn't going to frighten them or in, or surprise them in any way. Yeah, well, you know what? The production of this, it's a big mess. But how about I give you some history as to how we got to Greenland Please. 2011. So in 1997, Warner Brothers actually approached Kevin Smith to script the film. He'd obviously recently done Superman Lives, which all got thrown mm. in the bin. And then because it went to Tim Burton, but then that all got thrown in the bin. It's a whole other DC graveyard. So this is a lot of, <laughs> lot of stuff being ultimately pulled out of the bin, I guess. Exactly. He thought, though, that there were other people more suitable to make a Green Lantern movie. Uh, Jeff Johns tried to get the film into the production in the early 2000s, but apparently the first question he was asked was whether the film could be made without the ring. Terrific. Uh, so David S. Goyer was offered the chance to write and direct either Green Lantern or Flash okay. after Warner Brothers was impressed with his screenplay for Batman Begins. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to pass on the flash because somebody will jump on that and it'll be out any day now. <laughs> That's right. Around uh, 2006, Robert Smigel had completed a script of the film, which was a comedy adventure. You probably remember this. It was to star Jack Black as Judd Plateau. Terrific. Uh, an original Green Lantern whose bravery was defined by eating brains on a TV show, presumably hosted by Joe Rogan. Okay. Uh, however, the studio dropped the script idea due to very negative feedback from fans. There's some stuff in it like, he makes a construct of Britney Spears to have sex with and he makes his genitals bigger. So, you know, wow. 
I mean, that's comedy. And I love comedy. Oh, sorry. And I will never apologise for my jokes, Mason. Are you the joke police, Mason? Yes, I am. Oh. I've got a big ring with jokes on it. Wait, no, it's jokes, and then it's got like that red circle with a line through it. I mean, I don't, I don't hate the idea of a comedic Jack Black Green Lantern. Mm. Imagine the wacky guitars he would make. And it's Robert Smigel, so you'd probably get a, uh, a, a cameo appearance from Triumph, the insult comic dog. <laughs> exactly. Is that him? That's Robert Smigel. Sure. Uh, Greg Belanti uh, actually signed on to co-write and direct the film in 2007. That fell apart. Anyways, et cetera and so forth. It eventually went to Martin Campbell, who's directed, of course, Goldeneye. Mm-hmm. And Casino, Casino Royale, Royale, yeah. Uh, all of which we have looked at. Do you think you would have had a more positive reaction to this movie no. if you'd known that Martin Campbell directed it first? Because I didn't, and then I got to the end of this and I went, huh. Yeah, well, he didn't... Drop the ball on this one, didn't he? Well, I don't think he did, and we'll talk about right. kind of what uh-huh. happened. But let's talk about how he gets the ring okay. at first. Okay, so... Well, no, 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 first, James. First of all, he's a he's a, he's an irrepressible, charming bad boy. Yep. He's he's the perfect guy to, to be part of this experimental, you know, fighter jet program, except for the fact that he doesn't play by the rules, and he often has, like, really vivid, traumatic hallucinations about the death of his father that yeah, cause yeah, him yeah. a crash. How do you get that far? Him. How'd he get that far? Don't know. How many planes has he wrecked? Good question. <laughs> he also has a nephew that he doesn't visit again. Mm-hmm, sure, you know, yeah. And that's interesting, I guess. I think so too. Yeah, it's got a little Hot Wheels track. That's a little Easter egg for something that's going to happen later. Is that what an Easter egg is, Mason? I think that's not an Easter egg. Don't cancel me, Mason, all my jokes. <laughs> you watch out. I've got a big <laughs> ring that says Easter eggs on it, a little circle with a line through it. So, Anyway, he runs into uh, Tamuera Morrison, mm-hmm. who's... Uh, uh, the, uh, the other Green Lantern or whatever. Aben, sir. Thank you. Good makeup on that dude, by the way. Right? Looking really good. And he's like, uh, I'm going to bury this guy properly just under some rocks, I guess. <laughs> what, what? Did you panic? Because it would have taken a long time to... He buries him. Aben, sir, has been, has been grievously wounded by Parallax, who's a big, dirty cloud of piss from space. Yes, yes. Who's going to destroy Earth and then the planet Oa and then the universe, presumably. Yep. So Aben, sir, crashes to Earth and he's got a... His ring has to find someone on Earth who's worthy of wielding the, the, the Green Lantern ring next and so Hal Jordan finds him and he's like well better give him an ov- above ground burial strange under some rocks that'll take 20 to 30 minutes rocks in his pockets and put him in, put the, him water, in the water exactly <laughs> yeah. right it's right near the, the, the ocean I mean or they find him don't they, they sure do they find him immediately they being Amanda Waller that's right oh, in, this, wanna, in this case Angela Bassett I yeah. want to talk about that because I think this is supposed to be like a bigger universe thing yeah. but it's interesting because he's like I buried him because I think he was a pilot he was wearing a uniform He could have been a Nazi. The Nazis (laughs) wore uniforms. Yeah, right. You know? Or a chef. Or a chef. And he'd worked a double shift and he'd had a couple of drinks on the way, you know, out of his out of the space diner and he, you know, crashed. Exactly. And anyway, he's mates with Taika Watiti, who's absolutely wasted in this movie. I don't mean like he's drunk. Mm. I mean like a not like a chef after a double shift. Yeah, yeah, but I mean just like Taika Waititi has a sh- has a line in, in this movie where he's like, when it when it's revealed that uh, Hal Jordan is Green Lantern, now he's, he goes, "You're a superhero." What universe is this? Exactly. How do you know what a superhero is? Yeah. Are, they, are they are they flying around all the time? And if yeah. so, where were they? Where I mean, where was anybody in this? We'll, we'll get to it at the end. But <laughs> great question. Where were they? Except for there's a moment where all thirty six hundred Green Lands are drawn back to the planet Oa for a big meeting, and I'm yeah. like, nothing else going on. Are you no? guys, you guys having a smoke break all together? <laughs> you guys on smoker right now? <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't save your planet because I got to. You have holograms. We've seen them. You don't need a big meeting. That's right. You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a spaceship, ultimately. Yeah. What's happened, sir, doing with a spaceship? Dunno. Mm. Uh, so much of this, though, uh, special effects wise, and it's not all terrible, but it looks like a video game cutscene. It's that, and there's a lot of big heads in this. <laughs> Everybody's got a big, big fucking melon on them. You know what I mean? I sure do. Like a bunch of green lanterns. One guy's head like gets bigger, like it, it inflates sure. at one point, and the other villain that's a cloud. Yeah. I'm just not loving that aesthetic. Maybe oh, it's yeah. just because I'm seeing myself in it. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, I, got yeah. a, I got a big old melon. But and you're saying why not me? Exactly. Where was I? I was around. I got the biggest head on this planet. Give the ring to me. <laughs> but I think, you know, the, the, I like the idea of his costume being an energy construct. They mm-hmm. very quickly in early development went away from like a physical spandex leather, whatever you want to do, costume. Probably should have gone with a spandex leather, whatever costume. Or, if you ask me. or like a combination because, you know, often in the comics or pretty much always now, it, the costume is a construct also, mm. you know, but I feel like often... He just looks like it's a cartoon world, and then Ryan Reynolds' head is just floating around in it. You know what yeah. I mean? How did they? Was it was it that classic kind of 
uh, you know that the mocap, the, mo-cap suits. the weird mocap yeah. suits with the weird lines and dots and stuff. Yeah, on. okay, right. Because there's some good practical stuff. Because the redhead, big, big-headed dude who gets a wonderful post-credit scene. Who are we talking about? Red face to do. Oh, Sinestro. He's got a little mustache. What a shock! Just, just <laughs> FYI, had I not known anything about the comics, what a shock that the little mustachioed man with the sinister eyebrows, whose name is Sinestro, turned out to be a bad guy. The guy who spent five minutes beating up Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah. But I also feel like another element of this they got wrong was the way he moves and interacts with the world. He feels very smooth. You know what I mean? And like mm. everything he's doing doesn't have an actual impact. The way he enters or exits a space feels weightless. Mm. And I guess that is like a result of the, the ring and all of those kind of things. But he never felt like he was anywhere yep. or he's getting hit properly. Sure, yeah, the other yeah. one got stabbed by the, by the big cloud. Mm-hmm. But he's not getting stabbed by the cloud. Yeah, I, I don't, uh-huh. I don't, I don't know. I also think, and I think this is a problem, and also sometimes a an element of the character's abilities and powers and personality. What can it do? What, what can, can the it, ring do? Yeah, and he doesn't do anything very interesting. That has been a thing in the comics where people have been like, "You're doing boring things. Why are you <laughs> oh, yeah. just doing?" Brick walls and punches and shit. Sure. But it's like, I saw a Hot Wheels track, so I'm doing a Hot Wheels track. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, swords. You're right. Big jets. Because there's no real... They never really established the rules, so when a character with a Green Lantern ring wins or is defeated, you don't really know why. Yeah. Like, earlier on, the bunch of Green Lanterns go up to Parallax and they, they zap him with the rings and put nets and stuff on he's him. He's not having and it, they're, And they're like, uh, and he's like, I'll, I'm just going to break out of this. But then later, Ryan Reynolds, like, shoots a jet engine through him and it just sort of tears through him. Yeah. And then later, sometimes you can use the ring to... Uh, you know, open a subspace gate or a wormhole or create a black hole or something. Yep, yep. Sometimes you can just do a big punch. Can you go, I would like to invent a laser that will kill that guy, and then it just works? <laughs> I'd do that. Right? Yeah. What, and it's what, all about believing in yourself, and for most of this movie, he doesn't believe in himself. He's like, oh, I don't know, they gave me this ring, but I don't know. And then Kevin. Carol's like, well, how about you believe in yourself? And he's like, oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just... But all I'm saying is just personally, if I were given the ring, I just simply believe in myself. You'd have to. And I'd invent that laser from earlier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he also makes a flamethrower at one point and it shoots an actual flame. Correct, yes. Not a green flame. Mm-hmm. Now, there's some versions of Green Lantern which can create things down on the molecular level. Sure. So is that what he's doing? I don't know, James. Because why can it shoot a real yellow flame? Because that could be like, I've made uh, a green hot sauce bottle, but it shoots actual hot sauce. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. This tube has a burger in it. (laughs) A real burger. Why can't he just shoot hot sauce directly out of the ring is the question you're asking. I I mean, yeah, what what can he do? Right? You know that bit where the helicopter crashes through the crowd? Yes. It gets all the way through. It goes all the way through. It It gets it. But I mean, but here's the thing because none of those characters are important. The only characters that are important is Blake Lively's character. Yeah. It's a homage to Superman 78, I assume, where he catches the helicopter. I think it might be that or. uh, Just nothing? Just nothing, maybe, yeah. What's with the mask also? Doesn't look good, does it? Well, it's that. And also, he, he turns up to Blake Lively and it takes her a probably 20 seconds to figure out that it's him mm-hmm, when it's mm-hmm. very obviously Ryan Reynolds. How? And I'm confused because I thought maybe the mask has some kind of, I don't know, it has some kind of energy projection where it scrambles your brain when you look at oh, it, Oh, I see, right? sure, sure, sure. But it clearly doesn't. Yeah. Because she figures it out almost immediately, but also way too late. Okay, so so I'll, I'll, I'll solve this conundrum for you. Yeah. Uh, it's because when the character debuted, he wore a mask... Uh, that's the end of that sentence. Oh. And, and, and characters in, in comic books at the time didn't recognise characters they knew wearing small domino masks because they were stupid. They were that, written to be very <laughs> stupid. Yeah, I guess so. Stupid people. That's probably it, yeah. Anyways, like you mentioned, Amanda Waller's in it because this was supposed to be the start of something. You know, well, I mean, we saw the post The Green Lantern Cinematic Universe. Exactly. The, gl- the Gluku. <laughs> Gluku, that's right, yeah. Because the sequels, two sequels to this were greenlit before the movie oh, actually... Oh, greenlit. Thank you. Interesting. Before the movie actually came out. But here's what happened. Okay. So Ryan Reynolds and Martin Campbell uh, clashed reportedly on set. Campbell has stated in interviews that his first and only choice for the lead was Bradley Cooper. Okay. However, the studio was not willing to make an offer to him and ultimately cast Reynolds behind Campbell's 
back. Oh. Yeah. This led to an uncomfortable experience on set for Reynolds, whose performance was constantly critiqued by Campbell, who made him do many takes. Reynolds has stated in an interview with Variety that the film's failure was a huge relief as he had such an unpleasant experience and dreaded doing it again. My goodness. On top of that, Martin Campbell also heavily criticised the studio for hacking the film to pieces during the editing process, which he claimed resulted in the omission or alteration of numerous elements which would have made for a stronger film. I don't doubt that is the case. Apparently, there was a lot of very late additions and reshoots. I think Jeffrey Rush was added, like, well into production. In a rush, you might say. I... Uh, <laughs> Okay. At the last minute, you might say. I will say that, yes. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You're right. There are some, while I was watching it, I did feel like there there were some missing pieces. There's a moment where Hector Hammond flees from the heroes and they're like, how are we going to stop this guy? And then the next scene, Hector Hammond's just in his house. <laughs> Maybe check his house. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I'll check his house check too. Check where he lives, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, I reckon too. Anyway, it's time for Green Trivia. Green Trivia. I understand, James. These are getting James, worse. I, James, I understand. Yes, I know. I'm not taking suggestions. Okay. <laughs> this is not a segment where I I would need any critique mm-hmm. or any kind of feedback. This is it. Okay. I was going to go with Greenland trivia, mm-hmm. but no, you're all mean, so it's green trivia. <laughs> and you know what? It might be green trivia for the rest of this series. For as long as we do these videos, every time, it's just going to be green trivia now. <laughs> this is the last one, and this is on all of you. That's right. Anyways, as mentioned, Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively met on set, so that's fun and good. It's fun and good. I agree. I don't know if you remember It's this. good for their social media, certainly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, Hector Hammond is dead in the trailer. You can see it in the trailer. Oh, he's interesting. Just a, he's just a withered corpse. Oh, I see. Also, he has a flip phone and it's 2011. The fuck's that? <laughs> that's green trivia. I agree. At one point, Clark Kent slash Superman had a cameo as one of the candidates considered to receive the Ring of Power. Should have gone to him, probably. Probably. I mean, depending on yeah. version, but yeah. There have been numerous, I think, uh, Kryptonians who've had a power ring. Oh, you say numerous? You yeah, say? I think so. How many? Name them. Um, Probably Superman at one point, right? Yeah, probably Superman, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a thing, like a comic book or something. Yeah, 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 yeah a comic yeah, book yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, but he was cut because the filmmakers didn't want to depend on another superhero for uh, this success. Also, apparently there's a Central City sign in this movie. I didn't see it. Okay. Um, that's not to say it's not there, but who mm. cares? Because uh, traditionally the Flash is from Central City. That's right. But Greenland is from Coast City. Yes. But this isn't Coast City. No. It's by the River City. Yes. Bunch of rocks by the River City. <laughs> so you can bury a guy, City. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an early draft of the script contained a cameo by Alan Scott. The first Greenland. Whoa. Yeah, uh, whose powers were magical rather than cosmic. Well, in the comics at least. Scott was going to be the United States president. Hello. And near the end would reveal his own past as a Green Lantern to Jordan and give him his blessing. Terrific. I'm a president and a sex criminal like most presidents. <laughs> and I give you my blessing. Sorry I didn't help at all. They took my ring away because of my sex crimes, my numerous sex crimes. That's standard presidential stuff. But the Green Lantern Corps, they don't like that. They've all got big heads too. You've seen them. Uh, do you want some other names for uh, choices yeah. of Green Lantern? This will make it for great green trivia. I agree. Uh, Sam Worthington. I've written. Oh, I was in that era. I was in that era, yeah. When yeah. Sam Worthington got offered everything. Exactly. Uh, I've written Chris Pinn. I presume that's not a spelling you meant, error. You meant Chris Pine. I did there. not. I did not. It says Pin. Uh, Bradley Cooper has mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Timberlake. Sure, all right. And he was uh, in... Uh, Southland Tales. Yep, he was in that movie where at the time, the time everybody movie, had a clock on got their some wrist, time. and if you run out of clock wrist time, yeah, you explode or something. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, don't run out of clock juice. <laughs> I remember that movie. Uh, and of course, our Lord and Savior, uh, Jared Leto. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Take another run at it. Um, also, uh, in green trivia, yeah, that sort of looks like Captain America's shield. We know. Okay, <laughs> budget Mason and box office. All right, all right. It cost. $200 million. That's a lot for this movie, I think. And in 2011. Or well, anytime, really. Mm. Uh, but the box office return was $219 million. It's estimated... Oh, that's not a lot. That's not a, that's not a huge return, James. I agree. It's estimated that it lost $75 million, But who knows how much it really did lose. But a lot. But I will say this, Mason. It's not a total loss. Because, of course, you remember, a Green Lantern Corps movie was announced in 2015, which was released in June of 2020. Remember that big DC slate? James, James, They're like no, cyborg no. film, mm. Green Lantern film, maybe Zatanna, I don't know. Gee, Zatanna <laughs> would have been in there, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's fun. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but uh, speaking What a of- world that would have been if they'd kept to that schedule. I know. 
We'd all be different men. <laughs> sure. In Greenland t-shirts, presumably. Oh, my God, yep. Uh, but uh, I can quickly talk about the future of this. So THR... No future. <laughs> THR recently spoke with Greg Belanti, and they said, uh, you produced and wrote the original screenplay for the Green Lantern movie, which was a big disappointment. But he said, yeah, we're actually working on a Green Lantern series for HBO Max, which you've probably heard about. Mm-hmm. So it comes full circle. The movie did introduce me to more folks at DC, which led to Arrow. So while it was heartbreaking on the film side, it ultimately led to wonderful things on the televisual side. The entire Arrowverse. Exactly. Which it doesn't have a Green Lantern. Or John Diggle's Green Lantern. Sometimes they're like, what if he... Or I saw a fan trailer, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, or maybe like... I'm out of the loop. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, it'd be one of those things where, you know, like... He, he's like, I'm, I'm back in this, in this, uh, in this, in the final scene of this uh, series finale. But look what I have. What is it? And it's a glowing green thing, slightly off, off camera. Great, terrific. Someone will know. I in agree. The, in the comments. Wow! Can yeah. you believe we made it all the way through the DC graveyard? No. There's a few things that people. I thought I'd die. But no, you didn't. As Good of recording. Me. Wow. I didn't believe in myself. That was the problem. But then I believed in myself. That's right. That's right. Mm. A few people have said, uh, we're steel. We did it like five years ago. I don't <laughs> know. We already did it. And some people might be like, yeah, but you're better reviewers now. And I'd be <laughs> like, no, we're not. I think we're worse. If anything. We're, we're much worse. I mean, just, you heard this. Yeah. You all saw Even this. our cadence is worse. <laughs> we all talk, we both talk like this now. Before we didn't. But there we do. <laughs> Anyways, mm-hmm. what a delight. If you do have any suggestions for Caravan of Garbage, we always welcome them. Uh, but let's take a look at what we're doing next week. Hello there. Anyways, if you do want to see that early, these always go up early. Yeah. Uh, at bigsandwich.co, where if you do want to sign up, it's like our Patreon. There's, as mentioned, early videos. There's bonus podcasts mm-hmm. that we do exclusively there. That's There's right. movie commentaries, which mm-hmm. go exclusively there. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that doesn't go exclusively there, but it does go up a day early on Sunday as opposed to Monday. And ad-free. And ad-free. All of it's ad-free. Maybe if you want to check out that podcast in general, we, we talk about movies and whatever every week. Every that's week right. we talk about movies or every whatever. Every week. Uh, that's linked below. It's got us on YouTube channel and everything else. Anyways, thanks for watching this. We appreciate it. Uh, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week I hope so I would simply I would simply wear the ring yep and become the greatest superhero in the universe that's a great idea yeah yeah and I would defeat that parallax guy yeah and then like four other green lanterns would show up and they'd be like well done and mm. I'd be like who are you yeah I was fighting this thing for ages <laughs> I nearly went into the sun right <laughs> that was bullshit yeah.